Hey, dear, you're back. Are these two friends of yours? Oh, <laughs> so you've already become like one of us then. <laughs> oh, well, that's good to know. Anyway, uh, since we've got a newcomer, let me fill you in on what the Khan al Akhmar's been up to lately. They've become extremely aggressive. Apparently, even their own now have become acceptable targets. They even attack other relics' brigades, just the same as any other mercenary brigade. Even the most ferocious beasts still protect their own. And it sounds like they've thrown that straight to the wind. <sighs> That's right. Once they've collected enough loot off the other mercenaries, they sell it off to a different brigade, or, or turn to merchants on the black market. A portion of their profits is immediately exchanged for more food and weaponry to be used in their next violent operation. That's terrible! Yeah, and it really makes you wonder why they're so desperate for Mora. A few days ago, Isham and I trailed them for a while, and even disguised ourselves as merchants to conduct trade with them. We were able to learn a few things from the exchange. Rather than saying they're out to plunder and hoard Mora, it'd probably be more accurate to say that they're experiencing an internal power struggle. Wait, a power struggle? You heard me right. The vast majority of their victims are mercenaries from the other brigades of Deshret's relics. If their only goal was Mora, they could have gone after anybody. The targeted nature of their attacks points to a power struggle between the different brigades within the relics. That's the only plausible explanation we have. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find out anything more specific. It seems they're also trying to keep things under wraps. Oh, one last thing we discovered was that over the past few years, as the Khan al Ahmar became more and more active, Deshret's relics as a whole became a lot weaker. Hmm, sounds mighty strange to me too. Harun, you can leave the rest of the investigation to us. Gotta say though, I didn't expect you to go on a whole undercover mission during the few days I was gone. Sounds like you were really putting your necks on the line, no? <sighs> nah, it was nothing. We're just as concerned about the situation as you are. The Khan al Ahmar is your father's crew after all. <laughs> what he said. Besides, Dia, haven't you done more dangerous things than all of us combined? What we did is nothing compared to your experiences. Yeah! And while they went to talk with Dakan al Akmar, I took a look at the last camp they attacked. Any survivors of the attack were already long gone. There was nothing of value left in the camp. Ah, Hisham and Kalaf. You're here too. We rushed over as soon as we saw you come into Caravan Rebot. Although this new friend of yours looks a little green behind the ears, I'm sensing a special vibe from her. Now that we know you'll have a capable partner with you, we can also rest easy. Hey! What about Paimon? Feel anything special? Oh, uh, you're also planning to tag along with them? Of course! Paimon is the Traveler's most important guide! Wherever she goes, Paimon will follow! Oh, in that case, then you'd better take care of her too, Dia. <laughs> Don't worry about her. She may look tiny and helpless, but she's been through just as many battles as the Traveler here. Even if she had only survived on sheer luck, then that alone would still make her quite formidable. Ha! <laughs> I had no idea. I guess I shouldn't judge by appearances. <laughs> oh, one other thing, Dia. When you're free, why don't you update the deputy about your upcoming schedule? We held another recruitment event a few days ago, but everyone only came to see the flame main. You weren't around at the time, so people were pretty disappointed to only find our crew of rough, unkempt guys. The deputy put a lot of effort into the event, but it was basically for nothing. Only a few people chose to stay, and that really got to him. Ah, uh, sorry to hear that. I'll be sure to bring him some great liquor next time. I left in a hurry, and I couldn't make it back in time for the event. Gotta admit, I can understand their disappointment, though. You're our brigade's main selling point, after all. Now, if only the deputy could figure out a way to bring a few more smoking hot members into our ranks. <laughs> <laughs> Keep dreaming. Remember the last time I invited a couple gals into the brigade? You all just froze up with your mouths gaping like a bunch of scarecrows. The awkward silence and weird expressions left quite the impression on them. They were originally interested in joining us, but after that, they both told me they were too uncomfortable to stick around. Hey, didn't we agree to never bring that up again? Huh? Wait, are you serious? Why have I never heard about this? I don't think you were part of the brigade yet. Are you kidding me? 
I missed a once-in-a-lifetime moment like that and you weren't even gonna tell me? <laughs> all right, all right. We can tell you about it later. Now's not the time. Hey, don't you try to change the subject. You and Hisham get your butts over here and tell me everything right now. Uh, are they always like this? <laughs> More or less. There aren't many rules or graces when it comes to mercenaries. We're used to just speaking our minds. If someone starts getting under your skin, you just yell right back at them. And if that doesn't put an end to it, eh, then you just challenge them to a fight. But we also don't tend to take many things too seriously. Being direct and getting it all out of your system as soon as things come up is better than keeping everything bottled up, never talking about it. That's also why I never spare their feelings when I talk to them. If I want to laugh, I'll laugh. If I'm angry, then I'll unload on them. It's hard to stop once you get used to it. Though, I can never do that when I'm with the Homayanis. <clears throat> hey, knuckleheads! Can you at least tell me the rest of the intel before you go back to your bickering? <laughs> yeah, you hear her, Holoff? Told you we gotta focus on the investigation first. <laughs> I drew up a map. Right here is the spot. There you'll find the merchant caravan responsible for getting rid of Dukhan al Ahmar's looted goods. All you gotta do is wait and ambush them in the evening. They'll have no idea what hit them. Perfect. Thanks for that. Be sure to pass my regards to everyone else in the brigade as well. Will do. You stay safe, Dia. This should be the place. Let's find a spot to hide and bide our time. It's gonna come down to a fight one way or another, so let's all be careful. No need to worry. She knows her way around a fight. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. What I meant is that we probably shouldn't go too hard on the enemy. After all, we still need to get information out of them. Here they come. You ready? Let's not give them a chance to react and end this quickly. That's Let's get it on! Hey. Today. Hear my prayer! You want this one? I'll be back. <clears throat> huh? y you're the flame bane. Good. That saves me an introduction. All right. Time for a little talk. Are you buddies with Dakana Lakmar now? Tell me, what are they after? <laughs> you know the code of being a mercenary just like everyone else. The first rule is to never divulge key information about our employer. What makes you think I'd talk? <laughs> that might have worked on an amateur, but I know you're just looking to protect your reputation. Think about it, though. What's your reputation worth if you won't have the other tools you need to succeed in this line of work? Tools like, I don't know, your limbs or eyes? You've got five seconds. You might want to think twice about how much your employer's information is worth to you. Whoa! I'm not joking around. We can do this the easy way or the painful way. Two seconds! I'll save you the trouble. Huh? Are you crazy? He tried to bite off his own tongue. Quick, search the area for any first aid supplies. 
I definitely didn't expect him to go that far. Thankfully, the wound wasn't too deep, and he just passed out from the pain. But why would he be so extreme? Uh, I just wanted to test his mettle. You can get a lot of mercenaries to talk just by threatening them. I didn't expect him to be willing to go through so much pain just to deny us some intel. Well, he's out cold for now. We could wait for him to wake up, but maybe it's not a good idea to interrogate him any further. What should we do? Yeah, don't worry about it. It'll be a waste of time to interrogate him again after that. He might just hurt himself again if we start asking. <sighs> there are lots of goods around here. Let's search the area. Maybe we'll be able to find something. <sighs> I'm really sorry. Let me take a look. If this really is a merchant caravan, they should have a record of their transactions. Hmm. Yep. I see an entry for Dakana Lakmar right here. Kusela, Idrisi, Bashar, and Tikriti. All familiar names. Dakana Lakmar has been trading for a hefty supply of food, weapons, and medicine. It seems that in the past, they used to receive some canned knowledge as well. This caravan is just one link in their logistics chain. Once in the rainforest, the caravan will exchange the looted goods for Mora, and the funds will then be passed to a specific person. That person will then pack the caravan full of necessary goods, which will then be brought right back to Dakana Lakmar. Wait, why is there no Mora value recorded for the final transaction? Hmm? No value? Yeah. Every transaction before the last one was marked with an exact amount of Mora, but the final one, where they paid for everything to be brought back to the desert, was simply marked as delivered. Hmm, perhaps. But they couldn't have known how much they would make off selling the loot. Do they not care about profit margins at all? Anyway, the next part's the records of the goods themselves. There are a lot of entries. Everything was probably sourced from the rainforest. Huh? What's wrong? Shazaman Homayani? Homayani? You mean Dunyarzad's family? Uh, could, could it just be another family with the same last name? Hmm, I'd be surprised to find someone with the exact same first and last name. Shazaman Homayani is Dunyarzad's father, and the head of the Homayani family. Just what the heck is going on here? I'm sorry, you're right. I'll consider what we found and not jump to conclusions just yet. But what this piece of paper confirms is that the Homiyani family has been providing goods to Dakana Lakmar. What if the Homiyanis have been kept in the dark and don't know they've been trading with Dakana Lakmar? That's a possibility, but if that was the case, why is this caravan specifically named Shazaman as their person of contact? They could have just as easily bought goods such as food and medicine directly from Caravan Rebot or Port Ormos. Yeah, funding violence and looting. The Brigade gets the goods, and he is paid the proceeds from the sale of the loot. But why would he do something like this? It's not like the Homianis are in need of money. I honestly have no idea. I've been to their estate many times, and I've never noticed anything suspicious. The only potentially large expenditure I could think of would be the treatment cost for Dunyarzad's Elazar. Maybe they borrowed a lot of Mora in the past? But that's still just a speculation. I don't think the Master would stoop so low to make Mora. You're probably right. I know my lady's personality, and she wouldn't deliberately keep something like this from us. What should we do now? All we found is just another mystery! Hmm... If you ask me, we already have no choice but to confront her about this. I'm not worried. It's too early to make a verdict yet. 
I still have faith in the Homayanis. Let's go find my lady again. We'll tell her everything and see if she's willing to lend us her support. If we're lucky, we can not only figure out the mystery of this paper, but also follow the trail of breadcrumbs to the people responsible at Dakan Alakmar. Uh, Dia, are you sure this is the best decision? What if instead of getting the help we need, we just end up revealing everything we've discovered to the enemy? I've considered that possibility, but even still, I want to tell her what we found. I think I owe her that much. True friendship is built on trust. She showed genuine concern for me when we first brought up the topic. I can't repay her kindness with doubt and suspicion. That's not how I deal with people. You're right. Paimon wants to trust Ginyar's eye too. Yeah. Let's pay another visit to Sumeru City. We're back, my lady. Oh, you're back a lot sooner than I expected. You mustn't have run into any trouble then. Well, how did it go? Uh, what did you come up with? Actually, we are still investigating. It's just that we've discovered something strange. I see. The clues you found have led you back here, in the city? Something like that, yeah. You all look a little dispirited. Whatever you found must not have been very encouraging after all. Why don't you discuss it with me? Maybe I'll be able to say something to cheer you up? It's okay, my lady. It's not so much about me being upset with my father or anything like that. Uh, how should I put this? So something is wrong. Even the Traveler and Paimon have been uncharacteristically quiet. On any other day, Paimon would have already waved to me with a smile and shouted, Dunyarzad, we're back! <sighs> so tell me, what happened? Uh, well... My lady, please prepare yourself for what we're going to tell you next. It concerns the Master. The Master? Y you mean, my father? Okay, I understand. Uh, don't worry about me. I'll listen as attentively as I can. My father has been supplying goods to Dakan al Akmar? Yeah, it makes as little sense to us as it does to you. I've never doubted the Master's integrity, so I'm having a real hard time rationalizing how he could ever support an infamous brigade like them. Maybe he's not actually aware of the full story, and just stumbled into the deal by accident. I can't help but agree with the Traveler. Huh? You mean you feel the same way, Dunyarzad? Thank you for sharing all this information with me. Since you've told me everything you know, I should also tell you about some doubts that I've been harboring for quite a while. In the past, I thought that my father hired a bodyguard for me, so that I wouldn't run away and get lost. However, there are plenty of capable mercenaries in the core of 30. Why did my father go out of his way to hire Dia? Uh, about that. Well, the Homayanis really needed bodyguards, so they reached out to the Blazing Beasts. Later, the master told me that I was one of the best mercenaries he'd ever seen, and that I should stick around to become one of his bodyguards. He offered me a pile of Mora, so I just signed on. Well, but that didn't really answer my question. It, just think about it. Why did my father specifically reach out to the Blazing Beasts? 
Uh, maybe the Corps of 30 just didn't have anyone available, or maybe someone recommended us. I've never given it too much thought. I think I get what you're saying. You'd think none of this was a coincidence. Precisely. At first glance, nothing seems strange or out of place. But there are many parts of the story that don't actually make any sense. If my father had always been in contact with the Khan al Akmar, then it would make sense for him to bring Dia into her house. You mean the goal all along was to get Dia to be your bodyguard? No, 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 that's too much of a stretch. I cut all ties with my father a long time ago. He has no control over my life anymore. But that still doesn't rule out the possibility that your father has still been trying to influence your life without you knowing. Hmm. So, the Master was not likely an innocent victim in all of this? Sorry we put all of this on you so suddenly, Dunyar Zod. It's okay, Paimon. I should actually be thanking you. Regardless of his reasons, if my father has truly been funding a violent group of mercenaries, then it's my duty to bring him back to reason. But is that really the right thing to do? My father has committed many atrocities and deserves all the punishment that he has coming to him. I have zero sympathy for him. You may call me an ungrateful child, but my feelings will remain the same. However... The Homiyani family has treated me with nothing but generosity and kindness. If we decide to investigate this further, we could end up implicating the entire Homiyani family. I would be biting the hand that's fed me over all these years. Dia... It's alright, Dia. If anyone were to ask, you could always just say that I'm the one who instructed you to get to the bottom of this. You don't have to do that, my lady. I'm not conflicted because I'm afraid of taking responsibility. Besides, you're the one we should all be worried about right now. Hey! It's still too early to give up hope! Uh, what was the thing about friendship again? Right, yeah, trust! You said that yourself, Dia! Besides, there's no point on getting all riled up before we've confirmed all the facts! Thank you, everyone. That makes a lot of sense. I... Guess I should always remember the trust that I've placed in people. In which case, my lady, could you ask the Master to come out and have a chat with us? Sure thing. I also hope he'll be able to give us a logical explanation. Let's meet at the usual place then. Uh, usual place? Ah, oh, right! Thank you for coming, sir. Please allow me to introduce these two. This is the Traveler, and next to her is her travel companion, Paimon. Ah, yes. My daughter has mentioned them from time to time. It's a privilege to finally meet them in person. But we may skip all the pleasantries for now. What is the important matter you wish to discuss with me today? Well, we wanted to bring this transaction record to your attention. There's something on this record that we're all pretty curious about. So, that's what you found? Huh. Seems like I can't keep everything from you much longer. If you wouldn't mind, we'd like an explanation. Well, it's a long and difficult story. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. What I do know, though, dear, is that the truth will bring you no solace. If anything, it will likely cause you a great amount of anguish. Wait, me? Yes. I understand perfectly why you came to see me. And I am touched by your collective commitment to do the right thing. But knowledge always comes at a price. And sometimes, as they say, 
Ignorance is bliss. Your father, Kusela, and I both believed that. Of course, you have the right to seek and learn the truth, but I must warn you. The facts of this matter may reduce everything you've built for yourself into sand, blowing in the wind. If you must proceed, then Kusela's heartfelt efforts will also fade into the wind like a fleeting mirage. His heartfelt efforts? I, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not sure I follow. I've made it this far in life without a single drop of my father's support. I, I have my own ideals and ways of looking at the world, as well as people and causes that I've chosen to cherish and fight for. None of these things have anything to do with him. I came here today to support you as the head of the Homiyani family. No warning will change my stance on that. <sighs> I understand. Then let me tell you a little story. Our family once needed to take a trip to the desert when Dunyazad was just a baby. Along the way, we were attacked by bandits. They had superior numbers and quickly overpowered our bodyguards. When all seemed lost, a group of passerby Aramites lent us their support. Those Aramites were Kusela's brigade, Dekan al Ahmar. Kusela's men told me that the attackers were Aramite mercenaries, just like themselves. I was shocked. Why would Dekan al Ahmar go so far to save us and not spare the fellow Aramites? Kusela was grinning and walked over to play with baby Dunyazad. She was startled by his unfamiliar face and nearly started crying. Really? I... I never knew. He said that he had no particular reason to help us. He just took pity on us because he had a daughter about the same age. We started talking about our children and I sensed that he was a devoted father. To repay his kindness, I hired his brigade to help out at our estate for a time and... Offered everyone generous remuneration. So, that's what happened. It was many years before I saw him again. I almost didn't recognize him the next time he came knocking on my door. The man I knew to be strong and healthy had been reduced to a, a shell of a himself. He couldn't even walk anymore without his cane. So, what happened to him? He was perfectly fine when I left the brigade. I'm not too sure myself. The only thing that didn't change was his cheery disposition. He said there was absolutely nothing to worry about and that he had gotten into a fight. That was all. He then suddenly asked me if Dunyarzad, now that she had grown, would need a bodyguard of her own. At the time, Dunyarzad was going through a particularly severe bout of her Elazar. There was no need for her to have a bodyguard when she could barely leave the house. But he kept coming back to the topic. Come on, it never hurts to be safe. How do you know a bodyguard won't come in handy one day? I was completely lost at first, until he recommended the Blazing Beasts. And in particular, a mercenary named Dia. So he was the one who recommended Dia to you? Indeed. He didn't say it out loud. But it was clear that he saw Deshret's relics as an evil group who would eventually corrupt every member in their ranks. He was already beyond redemption, but he hoped that he would be able to detach his daughter from the vicious world of mercenary life. If Dia could stay in my house and keep working as a bodyguard, then gradually her affinity for the desert would decrease and she'd be able to leave her previous life behind. And that's why you offered her such generous compensation? Yes, but not just because of that. From the moment that he asked me for that favor, I also began to see Dia as my own daughter. And that's also why I tried to persuade you to stay when you asked for permission to leave. I was willing to spend however much it took. Kusela saved my daughter and I all those years ago in the desert. I could never refuse him entrusting his daughter to me. <sighs> he was always like that, acting like he's oh so smart and self-righteous. Kusela said that he'd reimburse me for a portion of Dia's fees. I refused to take any Mora from him, but he'd always send me funds anyway. Eventually, I just accepted them as a token of his gratitude. And that went on for a while until I received another letter from him a few years ago. The letter contained a request to help him buy food weapons, medicine, and 
even explosive materials. Wait! Isn't that around the time that Takan al Akbar started becoming more aggressive? That's right. When I started to hear some nasty rumors, I became wary. I wanted to meet him face to face to discuss things. But by then, he was no longer receptive to my requests to talk. If I had to guess, it's probably because he doesn't want to put Dia at risk. That thought occurred to me as well. I figured that he probably came to me uh, for help because he had nobody else to turn to. I, after some deliberation, I decided to send him some food and medicine. I turned down all his requests for explosives and weaponry. I am aware that even such a reduced gesture of support could lead to others coming to harm, but I could not simply reject his plea for help. In the end, it probably was the wrong decision. I plugged my ears to the rumors and just chose a solution that made me feel least guilty about myself. If you can, please tell me where he is now. None of the things he's doing right now make any sense if he's just trying to keep me from getting tangled up in his world. If all he wants to do is steer clear of me, then maybe he shouldn't have brought me into this world in the first place. Oh no, Dia, please don't feel that way. <sighs> I'm just angry because I can't wrap my head around any of his actions. Another way? I don't know. I knew him, and he was nothing more than a childish brute. I can't understand what's going through his head. But I guess you do have a point. We haven't uncovered the whole truth yet. We still need to figure out his exact actions and reasoning for these last few years. I'll do my best to help. Of course, anything between the two of you would need to be resolved between you and him alone. I don't know Kusela's exact whereabouts, Outside of supplying his brigade with some goods, I tried my best to avoid getting involved any further with him. However, there's a man on the list named Jawed. He used to be a mercenary in the desert and is now a member of the Corps of Thirty. He's responsible for supplying weapons and liaising with the Dakan al Akmar's merchant caravan. I think he should know Kusela's whereabouts. I've heard that he likes to have a few drinks alone and enjoy the cool wind at night outside the tavern. Maybe you'll be able to find him there. Understood. Thank you, sir. Then, I guess this is bye for now, unless... I'll stay and be with my father here. To be honest, I'm still a little dazed and haven't finished processing everything quite yet. My father has indeed done something wrong, but if I think about it, I'm also not sure if there was a right way to handle this problem. I feel like... Our only course of action is to turn everything we know over to the Core of Thirty, and let them render judgment. Yes. I am prepared to accept whatever verdict they choose. It's time to face my mistakes. Guys. I know what you've been up to. Smuggling weapons to violent brigades in the desert while working for the Corps? <laughs> Pretty bold, if you ask me. Shh. Keep your voice down. How do you know all that? Come with me. We should take this elsewhere. I'll be happy to talk things over once we're somewhere private. This place should do. All right. Back to my question. How did you all know about me? Don't worry about that for now. You know what kind of punishment you'll face once we report you to the core, I assume. Wait, wait, wait. There's no need to jump the gun. Let's talk this out. 
What are your terms? So what's in it for you anyway, Mora? Uh, well, I was a little tight on money at the time, and Kusela took good care of me in the past. I waited in my mind, and I couldn't find a reason to turn the opportunity down. I wouldn't only be helping my benefactor, but I could also make some quick Mora. Let me tell you how it is. We're investigating Dakana Alakmar, and we're going to put an end to their operations. If you provide some help for us, then we might just put in a good word later to reduce the terms of your punishment. Hey, why don't we discuss this a little first? Listen, I made quite a bit of more for my last run. Just give me a number, and I'm sure we can... Shut it. My patience is running out. You should know when a mercenary is after something other than money. All right, all right, sheesh. But you gotta promise you'll put in some nice words for me later. They're always on the move. Here's the spot they were at the last time I made my delivery to the desert. Feel free to go have a look. I'm just telling you, though, it's not on me if they're not there anymore. Sure. And then you can forget about any nice words from us. Hey, come on. Now you're just being unreasonable. Really? And how do I know you're not leading us straight into a trap? Don't forget, you're the one with no bargaining chips. All right, I get it, I get it. Why don't you go take a look, and if they're not there anymore, I'll try to figure out something else for y'all. <laughs> now that's more like it. Let's move. And as for you, try to stick around the city until we get back. You don't want us to call the folks from the core and have them drag you back to the city. Stay close. No going off on your own. The desert doesn't take prisoners. Hmm. <laughs> Seems like we're in luck. That should be their camp right up ahead. Let's go. We'll finally get to the bottom of this ourselves. I'm here to see Kusela. Tell him to get out here! Uh, dear? Why are you here? <laughs> Do your work! <laughs> Yield! Following orders. Hi. Through me, justice is served. You stand condemned. Guilty. Your penance is due. Guilty.
She's so strong! Enough fighting. We all know each other, and I don't want to take things too far. Just bring Kusela to me. There's no use hiding him anymore. Uh... Did you understand a single word I just said, or do I need to bash your skull in some more? All right, everyone. Let's all just calm down for a second. Um, Dia. The boss can't come out and see you anymore. He died a long time ago. What? Seems like you've been out of the loop for a while. Guess that's for the best, though. At least, that's what the old man wanted. When did he die? What happened to him? A few years ago, Kusela broke up Dakano Akmar and went to the Deshret's Relic's headquarters by himself. So is that when you guys started acting up? We would prefer to call it taking revenge. Every last person in Deshret's Relic's must pay in blood for what they did. <sighs> Let me start from the beginning. Dia, do you know how the Head of the Relics maintained order internally? Overwhelming strength and unquestionable authority? Those were a part of it, yes. But just those on their own weren't enough. They had another tool at their disposal. They called it a person's record. Regardless of whether they joined by their own will or were coerced, every person in Deshret's Relics were forced to leave a record of themselves at headquarters. Whether it be their deepest sin, some unforgivable act, or their most immoral exploit, the record served both as a symbol of loyalty and the perfect material for blackmail. That's precisely it. Every one of us have a record. Me, Bashar, Tikridi, and all the boys who grew up with Dia and ended up joining our ranks. But you, Dia, you were never asked to provide a record. Were you? I... I never even knew this was a requirement. You were probably the only person in all of Deshret's relics who didn't know about it. Ever since you were born, Boss had been trying to shield you from this organization's sinister rules. Not only that, but he also banned all of us from committing any nefarious acts. He said he'd take care of the dues we had to pay regularly to headquarters. But in the end, he was just an ordinary person. What could he do? He was forced to go to headquarters again and again to account for missed dues and incomplete records. He'd come up with all kinds of excuses and get beaten up as a result. We all knew he was doing that for you. He wanted to get you out of this world no matter what it took. And that's why he became a shell of himself and couldn't walk without a cane! Wait, but that doesn't make any sense. I didn't know about any of this, and I'd never seen him get injured or beaten. Because you were too young at the time. How would you ever tell between wounds from a beating and wounds from battle? When you left home after that final argument with him, he seemed to age by a decade overnight. Even his hair went gray. So, even the blazing beasts were... Yep. It was all his doing. Had he not arranged them to come to you, you probably would have been reduced to a pulp before you ever left the desert. A few years ago... Boss said he needed to make another trip to headquarters. He was already pretty weak then, and we all assumed he was going to get beaten again. I suggested that he hand the role of leadership over to me, but he said there was no longer any need, since the Khan al-Ahmar would soon be no more. His words made no sense to me, but that night, we heard that a massive fire tore through headquarters and raised everyone's records to ash. Everyone gained their freedom that night. Many members fled, not just from our ranks, but from the other brigades as well. But how could we leave with a clear conscience? All of us who knew exactly what had happened. The boss can't have just died for nothing. Those heartless jerks at headquarters took him from us. From that point on, the sole purpose of Dakan al-Ahmar became revenge. The big fire that boss started was quite a blow to headquarters strength. It's given us the opportunity to launch our attack. Even though we're outnumbered, we vowed to see our revenge through to the very end. There were people from headquarters who changed their names and went into hiding. Some fled to other brigades, and others escaped to the rainforest. But we won't let any of them escape our wrath. They'll all pay for what they've done. We've suffered plenty of losses as well. To keep going, we need an enormous amount of supplies. 
from food and medicine to weaponry and explosives. All we can do is exchange our loot for Mora, and then use that to get supplies. We forged Boss's handwriting and sent out many letters to his former friends. Thankfully, many people were willing to come to our aid. We were also able to attract many mercenaries who shared our goal. We've endured unspeakable pain to win many impossible battles. Deshret's relics have become weaker and weaker, and now we finally have an opportunity to directly strike their headquarters. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what to say anymore. <laughs> we do know right from wrong, but we were sinners from the very beginning. We do not deserve the freedom that the boss won for us with his life. Boss always loved his old-fashioned hero stories. Those tales about sacrificing yourself to save the world. We used to always laugh at him for it. But in the end, he really went and lived those stories out himself. As for me, I never considered myself a hero. We're all the lowest of the low. We have no right to even imagine such an existence. But maybe those hero stories he liked foreshadowed everything that was to come. The spirit of the hero touched all those he had saved, and more and more people joined his cause. Maybe we were all just acting along with the play in the beginning, but as we acted the parts and recited the lines, we were drawn in, and now we want to see the story through to the end. I'm sorry, dear. I know you always found us insufferable ever since you were young. Just think of this as a madman ranting. I'll go with you. Huh? Dia? You wanna go with them? I grew up with these guys, and I know they're not bad people. It's just that some situations get so bad that it's difficult to tell good from evil. All I know is that Deshret's relics must be destroyed. Furthermore, I want to go see the place for myself. I want to know if my father is still there. I know you don't want to get involved in this, so there's no need for you to tag along. I can do this on my own. Yeah, Paimon feels like we'd only regret it if we don't see this through to the end. <sighs> Thank you. We'll be a lot stronger together with you. <laughs> I bet Boss would lose his mind if he ever knew you'd join us at the very last moment like this. Considering all the losses and injuries we sustained, we can't afford to turn down someone as powerful as you. He can think whatever he wants. But the fact is, I owe him this much. Yeah. 